Despite it being an entertainment medium that lives or dies by its ability to make the fake seem real, the best wrestling stories usually blur those lines somewhat. Or as the immortal Hulk Hogan once put it, Jabroni marks without a life don't know it's a work when you work or work and work yourself into a shoot marks. You see, when you take an entire traveling carnival of buffed up men and women who have to psychologically throw themselves into rivalries and fights and make them all seem like they really do actually hate each other, well then some of them are going to actually hate each other. You've heard of art imitating life, I'm sure, well it sort of works the other way as well. Companies like WWE try to keep this all under wraps of course, but thanks to autobiographies, the internet and most of the industry being up for spilling all the tea when you get a single drink inside of them, all the good stuff eventually comes to light. My name is Adam Cleary and these are 8 real wrestling fights that surpassed anything you saw in the ring. Number 8, Chris Jericho vs Goldberg. Alright, so we never actually got to see this matchup officially in WCW because of bloated egos or general mismanagement of talent or take your pick. But Chris Jericho has gone on record multiple times as saying that it actually happened backstage. In the glory days of WCW, Goldberg was a jacked, bald, bona fide superstar, and Jericho was this small, annoying, extravagantly dressed mouthpiece who was just trying his best to get comparative airtime. What do you mean that sounds familiar? Anyway, one day Goldberg let his feelings be known that he had no intention of working with such a low-level talent in any major capacity. When word got back to Jericho, he immediately confronted him about it. Things reportedly escalated into a full-blown fight once Goldberg put his hand on Jericho's throat. According to Chris, I'm not the toughest guy in town, but where I come from, if you put your hand on someone's throat, you gotta f do something about it. Then the two scuffled for a bit before Jericho allegedly cinched him in a front face lock, where he promptly held on for dear life so the big guy couldn't get up and, in his words, kill me. The two were eventually pulled apart by the likes of Hurricane and Booker T, but Jericho considers himself lucky that they got pulled apart at all. Unfortunately, Goldberg has never told his side of the story, leaving us to believe that either one, it really did go down this way, or two, he's too nice of a guy to get involved in this kind of smack talking. You assume we'll never see it happen in a ring now, but hey, Saudi oil money is a hell of a thing. Number 7, The Big Show vs The Great Carly. Haha, <laughs> here's one for you. Supposedly, The Big Show once took the hump with Carly for stealing the bulk of his moveset. Now, not to be a dick here, but big boots, massive chops, the odd clothesline, and no selling shoulder charges are pretty much just what every single big man in wrestling does. Regardless, though, Show wasn't having it and took an actual swing at Carly. Then, and I swear this is how it's meant to have gone down, he slipped on someone's duffel bag. Carly got on top of him and started slapping him around the head. Several wrestlers then dived in to break it up, and I would like to declare each and every one of them mortal enemies of the banter. Number 6, Booker T vs Batista Yeah, during my close in real life personal friend Dave Batista's swift rise up the ranks in WWE, he became known in the back as, and I'm quoting here, a bit of a douche. Booker T, very much a backstage purist, took exception to this during a commercial shoot for SummerSlam 2006. While it's not known exactly what sparked the fight, those who witnessed it said the overall argument lasted for about 5 minutes until Booker finally directed Batista to go into an empty room and, quote, go for it. The two men went in and immediately went at it hard. Batista apparently caught a couple of lucky sucker punches on the former GI bro, but other than that, Book absolutely had him all over. Both men were left visibly cut up and bruised, which you can actually see here in their ensuing matches. To this day, Batista swears that it was all a misunderstanding and that he never disrespected anybody, telling WWE.com after the incident, I am not a prick. Booker remembers it differently, of course, but says that the air is clear between them and they definitely respect each other. See? That's nice. Number 5, Scott Steiner vs DDP Okay, so story time, back in the year 2000 with WZ Dub circling the plug hole, DDP's then wife Kimberly finds some drug paraphernalia in the locker room. She then promptly tells management that it belongs to known recovering drug user Tammy. Never one to abide a grass, this didn't sit well with Scott Steiner, who responded with some not so pleasant words about her. Naturally, Paige wasn't having that about his in real life misses, and an actual fight broke out. Some reports say that Steiner was all over Paige, destroying him, and was about this close to taking out one of his eyes before the fight was broken up. But if you believe interviews DDP has given since, the situation favoured Paige. He actually apparently had Steiner in a guillotine. As ever, the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle, but Paige 
has since gone on record to say that he actually nearly lost his eye here. I mean, precisely why Big Papa Pump felt the need to get his chap out in the middle of it all remains a mystery. Number 4. Brock Lesnar vs Kurt Hennig Old Curtie Wordy might be a perfect technical wrestler, but Brock Lesnar is... Well, he's Brock Lesnar. Back in 2002, when Lesnar was still new to the company, a drunken Hennig saw fit to haze the young guy while on a plane ride back from a WWE 2 of Europe. Okay, so I just want to give this sentence enough room to breathe because here in 2019, it's possibly the dumbest sounding thing you're ever going to hear. Right, nice and limber. Kurt Hennig challenged Brock Lesnar to a wrestling match in the middle of a plane. Lesnar, egged on by Paul Heyman, accepted the challenge and promptly tackled him right into the side of the plane, right next to where the emergency door is. That is some 500 pounds of angry men slamming into the one part of the plane that can actually open at some 30 odd thousand feet. Unsurprisingly, a lot of the boys, including Triple H, immediately piled in and broke it up. Number 3, Eddie Guerrero vs Kurt Angle Yeah, this really should have been a feud made in technical wrestling heaven, but if you cast your minds back to it, yeah, it sucked. Anyway, after a few particularly disappointing matches, Kurt Angle got fed up and started a shoving match with Latino Heat. According to Angle, words were then exchanged between the two about who was to blame for this noticeable dip in quality. And then, and then, for some reason, Eddie Guerrero tried to take him down using an Olympic-style move known as a leg dive. Of course, being an actual Olympic gold medalist, Angle immediately got out of it and put him in a front headlock. After a brief scuffle on the floor, the Big Show and John Laurinaitis ended up wading in to pull them both off. <laughs> Lol, pull them off. JBL, of all people, also added a little something to this story, saying that when he asked Eddie why in the hell he tried to perform an Olympic-style takedown on Kurt Angle, of all people, Eddie immediately shouted, Because I'm stupid. Number 2. Arn Anderson vs Sid Vicious In what sounds more like a Benny Hill sketch than an actual physical encounter, this confrontation is one of the most infamous to come out of the 90s. Legend has it that while out having a uh, few drinks with the boys, Sid Vicious made a comment loudly about Ric Flair. This causes good pal Arn to pile in and defend him. Ric Flair's a washed up old man! Yeah, well, you're not horseman material. Oh yeah? Well, you don't draw. Why, you little- There was a chair involved, a broken beer bottle, and probably a whole lot of oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Oh yeah? Things simmered down briefly until later that night when Sid went into Arn's hotel room looking to continue the fight with a pair of scissors. Both men managed to stab themselves repeatedly and were rushed to hospital. Arn lost a lot of blood, Sid lost his job with WWE, and we'll call that one a draw. Number 1. Vader vs Paul Orndorff The epic tussle between Vader and Mr. Wonderful is widely considered to be the most vicious, non-lethal fight ever to go down between two wrestlers. At the time, Vader was wrestling in WCW, and Orndorff was a member of the production management. So when Vader showed up late to an event, Orndorff gave him a dressing down of sorts, which then dissolved into a fist fight. Up front, you should know that there is no version of this story that doesn't end with Orndorff stomping the big guy into the ground. But for the sake of fairness, let's hear both sides. First up, Vader. Paul was threatening me four or five inches from my face and I slapped him. He came off his feet and landed on the back of his head. There was this steel shed that they had these big giant steel tools to put the ring up together and his head must have missed that by three inches. Then I backed up against the wall and Sting was to my right and I crossed my hands in front of me and I was just not going to fight, thinking that I could end up in jail very easily. Paul hit me three or four times directly in the face and I let it happen. I didn't move, I didn't fight back, and finally as he was going for a fifth hit, I grabbed him and front face locked him, and we went to the ground. He got up first and kicked me a few times in the face. Before I could get up, he had been ushered into the agent's room. They had gotten him in that room, and when I went in after him, they said, Leon, you cannot fight in here, get out. So I told Paul, let's go out into the parking lot and finish this. Now, I was very upset, and I was ready to fight. But I'm not saying that Paul wouldn't have went out to the parking lot with me, but he wasn't allowed to, and that's pretty much the way it ended. I mean, sure, that all sounds reasonable, but here is Mr. Wonderful's version. The last thing I remember is that I was kicking him in the face with my flip-flops on, and it hurt my feet. So, oh, yes, considering both of those, I'm going to stick my neck out here and say that Orndorff probably won. 
So, there you have it, those are eight real wrestling fights that surpassed anything you saw in the ring. Guess which member of the What Culture staff really wants to kick my head in and win one of the eight t-shirts they try and sell you in every video. Let us know what you made of it all in the comments below, and of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. But in the meantime, though, thank you so much for watching. I have, of course, been Adam Cleary, and I'll see you soon.